Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, we didn't have enough time to cover everything in our second um, part of the new birth. Um, we went over that last Sunday. Um, but now we're going to cover the last couple of slides that we had left from that uh, study. And these are really, really, really important uh, concepts to get into our heart, get into our mind and understand. Um, so here's a new video just for that. And hopefully this will help us kind of um, provide a little bridge to get us from talking about the new birth and regeneration, the new man, the new person, the new spiritual, um, you know, uniqueness we have now being in Christ and our human spirits and help us transition that over into this charismatic prophetic um, gifting of the Holy Spirit that uh, God also works in us as we seek him out for these things. So a lot of times we hear these the statements, the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit, right? Fruit and gifts, okay? But we think of those so many times as two, uh, well, actually as the same idea, but they're really two different concepts in the Bible. Um, another way of seeing the fruit of the Spirit versus the gifts of the Spirit, um, think of it as a person's character versus some person's giftings, okay? In, in the church, we think of a prophetic gifting, but think of it just... In the natural world, like in the secular society, we see all types of people like musicians, right? Um, man, they are super talented, super gifted, and they can do stuff with their guitars and their voice and their instruments that no one else can do. But yet we also see them going into jail and getting on drugs and, and being, um, I think, a Bobby Brown from the 1990s, like um, having uh, physical violence issues and stuff. Their character is just totally lacking. But these gifts, um, nonetheless, are very active and very present, and everyone can recognize them. Um, and character is, is, is a different entity altogether. Um, but we normally, as uh, letter A here says, the terms fruit of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit, we usually think of these as synonymous, the same thing. But definitely, um, in, as we can see in secular society in the world, and also in the Bible, they're, they're totally different. They, 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 they're not um, in the same category. Think about it. A fruit implies a byproduct um, of a seed. Uh, something um, is, is planted and it's watered and it grows and you have to cultivate it. And when we think of the fruit of the spirit, we think of something, as, as we've talked about in the new birth, it's this born from above our human spirit that's been transformed and made new um, through the Holy Spirit administering the life of Christ to us and regenerating our human spirits. Um, fruit can be grown from that. It doesn't happen right away, but it, it, it's a process, fruit. But a gift implies something that's already complete and freely given. It's a gift. You didn't work for it. Someone just gave it to you. Imagine like an inheritance. Someone gives you, they leave you a whole bunch of money as a gift. You didn't work for that. It just, boom, it's there and you own it. Or like a Christmas present. Someone just gives you a gift of like these cool, awesome transformers or whatever your, the gift is. Um, maybe a pony, <laughs> uh, whatever it might be, right? But you didn't work for it. You didn't have to cultivate. You didn't have to grow for it uh, or, or grow into it or work for it. It's just there. This is a, these are very, very different ideas. So a fruit must be cultivated and grown. Let her be here. Um, a process is in mind when you think of fruit. But a gift is more or less developed and already ready to use. Okay, So God seeks to develop our new spiritual nature so that bears fruit. We want to have fruit of the Spirit. Your new human spirit that's been regenerated and become brand new, that's in the likeness of Jesus, it's in the same form of God, created in true righteousness and holiness. He wants to develop that in us. Um, and you can read about that, the, um, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. Most people who have been through um, Sunday school, evangelical Sunday school, you know, there's lots of songs out there, but love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, Self-control, right? These are all, these are the uh, fruit of the spirit, right? Um, it but this arises out of the new birth, our new spiritual creation, and so many times we always attribute that to like, well, that's just the fruit of the Holy Spirit living in us, and as the Holy Spirit influences us, it slowly changes us into you know these these 
these fruits. But really, the fruit of the Spirit is coming from this new, regenerated, this new person that we are. And the Holy Spirit is there who comes alongside of us to minister and help us walk in this. But it, this fruit is really ourselves. It's ourselves who have been changed and start walking this new nature. It's really beautiful. But, okay, that's one, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, but at the same time, which blows our minds, we can talk about that uh, to a length another point, but God graciously gives us gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts, something that's already ready to go. It's prepackaged. It's turnkey, right? Um, these gifts are supernatural, and they're not given to us based upon your level of spiritual maturity or how great you are or anything. Think of the Corinthians examples. Um, if you look at the, the book of 1 Corinthians, they had all types of problems going on, just starting with you know, 1 Corinthians 2 and 3, that they had sex and divisions within the church, and some were following Apollos, some were following Paul, some were following other people. Some were just saying, I just follow Jesus. Um, in 1 Corinthians, they were suing each other, taking each other to court. They're having some pretty crazy... Um, strange bedfellows. I mean, a man was sleeping with his mother-in-law. I mean, I mean, um, there was all types of issues. People were getting wasted and drunk at the communion table when they met together. It's like, oh my gosh, like what's going on here? Um, and there's more problems we even talk about there. Um, but yet, um, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, especially 14, Paul, the Apostle Paul says, and I think even in 1 Corinthians 1, the first chapter, he says that they're not lacking in one gift of the spirit they had all the gifts all these charismatic prophetic gifts speaking in tongues and prophecy and gifts of healing um and so on and so forth they weren't lacking in that but they were lacking the fruit of the spirit okay but for some reason god gives us these gifts of the holy spirit that are already you know um given to us in a full capacity we have to learn to walk in them but yet they're already given um even though our character doesn't match up with uh, what we probably deserve. And these gifts, these spiritual gifts, arise from the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit comes to indwell in us and live in us, and they arise out of the person of the Holy Spirit. And they have been terribly abused and terribly perverted, especially you can go on YouTube and just watch some pretty crazy stuff of the you know, different gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you can even say, are these real? Are these not real? But so many people have testified, even those in Woodland Hills, of, wow, I came out of a bad charismatic church or a bad Pentecostal church or a bad, you know, word of faith church. And yes, they absolutely can be abused and perverted because the character, for some reason, God doesn't choose to give those gifts to people that have developed character first. He doesn't say, wait, wait until you get this character, then I'll give you these gifts. He seems to just be this crazy God that, gives these gifts despite um, a person's character. And my theory on that is because a lot of a lot of us will never reach that perfected character, you know, that we need to, to walk in these gifts fully. And a lot of the things of the spirit and, the, and a lot of the will and uh, intention and the mind of the Lord would never come to pass if God just had to wait until we reach that character state. Um, that's my theory. Um, and this little uh, mini bullet point under letter D on my number three here, or little indent three. The gifts of the Holy Spirit can often look really strange and uncomfortable um, when exhibited in Jesus' followers who don't have the character of fruit. That's what we just kind of talked about here. Um, so what do we do about all that? Um, I think what we do first off is recognize that the fruit and the gifts are different things, okay? And here's a little graph that somebody provided me with, a guy named Paranel Nielsen. He's uh, uh, he, he does a lot of different things, but one of the things I know him by, he's a, uh, one of the pastors at Hosanna Lutheran Church in Lakeville, Minnesota, and uh, definitely is familiar with the uh, gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And he kind of came up with this graph and passed it on to me. Uh, I asked for it because I think it's really, really beneficial. But look at a, a, a pretty typical XY graph. And if you look in the upper 
uh, or sorry, excuse me, the bottom left hand corner, we see on the scale, the gifts are all the way to the left, which means no gifts of the spirit. There's no charismatic prophetic gift in the spirit. And then on the fruit to the spirit, the up and down, the vertical axis, you know, um, at the very bottom, meaning there's no fruit. Look in that little quadrant on the left. It means, man, life um, in the community of God is going to be pretty boring because <laughs> there's no gifts happening, right? It's it's kind of a dead church. And then people are also bitter um, because there's no fruit. There's no joy. There's no love, peace, uh, p uh, peace, patient, kind, kindness, goodness, self, uh, self-control, these different things. And so that's a pretty rough place to be in, right? But then if, if we move uh, up in the graph vertically, wow, you know, the gifts are still not there. We're not really seeing the healings or the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit that God intends us to have to be a witness for Jesus that are supernatural. But man, there's a lot of fruit going on. So there's a lot of peace, patience, joy, um, all these different things that are cultivated and are grown over time. And yeah, that can be a really friendly environment. Man, this is really awesome. And you can do some really wonderful things. Um, but we see the gifts are so lacking. But then if you move to the right-hand corner, um, the right-hand side of this little graph, and look at the bottom, the gifts are, you know, huge, right? Everyone can pray in tongues. Everyone's got this, they, at least they think they have the gift of prophecy, and they're speaking words over people, and the, the, the meetings are just great, and people are falling out in the spirit. Holy cow, you think that way. But yeah, look at the, the way that the graph shows the fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. They're abysmal because that hasn't been cultivated. It hasn't been grown. And so many people come out of this type of a charismatic Pentecostal environment where there's lots of gifts, but there's no fruit of the Spirit. It hasn't been cultivated. And so it's dangerous. It is just dangerous at all. And, and, and it, it, it really leads to um, unfathomable damage. That has been done to people and 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 on behalf of so many other Pente pentecostals charismatics i mean just, just have to apologize for that i mean um that's been the witness and it's been really ugly but uh, ultimately what we're looking for is this you know upper right hand corner the empowered corner that it says where the fruit of the spirit where the character has been development uh, has been developed and the gifts of the spirit are really flowing and the, you can really just tangibly sense the life of God in your meetings and among yourself individually when you have a relationship with the Lord. And it's just it's just imbuing out of you just naturally. I mean, that's awesome. And, and we kind of characterize that as, man, this, this body of Christians were really empowered to go out and change the world. So that's how we really separate the difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. They're really two different things. And hopefully that those couple slides give you a little bit of insight into um, what we're aiming at at Woodland Hills and what we aim at um, just in general here.